Live from the Bob Levy Broadcast Center, overlooking the Tom's River, it's time to get up, get out, do something. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin. Be a part of the show, 732-505-1160. News Talk Radio, WOBM, AM 1160 and 1310. Listen online at WOBMAM.com. Welcome back. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin, 708, 25 degrees. Heading up to 28 today here on February 11th. WOBM AM 1160 and 1310 News Talk Radio. Uh, streaming live at WOBMAM.com and on the Radio Pup app, 732-505-1160. So now I want to share with you something that I I, I don't know that all of you are going to get to experience in your life. I'm going to take it down a notch for a moment. It's a serious matter. There's nothing more humiliating, embarrassing, upsetting, then understand believing that you've been saying someone's name incorrectly leading up to their appearance across the table from you on a radio show. So I am formally apologizing on behalf of Town Square Media, my employer, on behalf of WOBMAM, on behalf of Zach, on behalf of Jeremy. I now introduce Kevin Gagan, all right, because I was adding an extra syllable, which was inappropriately pronounced. Pronounced. See, I did that on purpose because I wanted to mispronounce pronounce. Anyway, Kevin, welcome to the studio. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you very much, Jeremy. It's a pleasure <laughs> to be here. And no offense taken, uh, the name has been slaughtered over the years. Oh, that's good. Well, <laughs> I'm glad. Night. I'm glad that you have a thick skin about it because, uh, yeah. I by the way, my name uh, seems so easy on paper, like Grunin, G R U N I N, but I get called Grunin, Grunin, uh, you know, Smith, Jones, everything. You name it. Uh, so, Kevin, uh, first of all, most importantly, congratulations. Um, and our condolences. No, congratulations on joining the uh, Tom's River uh, Town Council. Thank you very much. Uh, we are uh, super excited to have you uh, representing our great town. Um, but I guess uh, for the sake of our listeners, uh, why don't you give them a little bit about your background? Uh, what you know, what you've been doing all your life, leading up to this, the culmination. Uh, of uh, of of all of your hard work, right, on the town council here. Well, thank you. First of all, you know, it, it's been quite an honor. I'm very humbled uh, to be selected. There was, you know, a number of excellent candidates uh, that were screened and whatnot, and uh, ultimately I was selected, and things just happened to line up uh, over the past couple of months uh, leading up to this point. Um, first of all, I'm an original Tom's River native. I was born here in the 60s. My father used to be a Dover Township police officer before uh, – moving on to the federal government as an ATF agent. Um, I'm a graduate of Tom's River High School North, 1983. Uh, I went to Ocean County College. I worked at Community Medical Center as a paramedic before becoming a police officer, which I maintained that certification throughout, and I really enjoy doing that. Um, my uh, my uh, appointment to the ta- uh, Tom's River Township Council is, you know, second, you know, it, it's a very high honor to me. It's second to, you know, serving the township 26 years as a police officer in this town and. uh Again, I did not want to go. I kind of left kicking and screaming, but with times changing and whatnot, it was time. Um, after that, I've been involved in the town. Uh, at age 16, I joined Silverton First Aid Squad. I'm still extremely active there. I'm a member of Silverton Fire Company, serving as past chief. A couple of times, uh, I used to own the 7-Eleven franchise uh, on Hooper Avenue in Silverton for a number of years. So I was always uh, extremely busy. Um when, uh, you know, when I first was hired as a police officer, the college requirement I met, and I continued my education, got my bachelor's degree, and finally finished at Seton Hall with my master's degree, and kind of continued on after that. Um, also served as a fire commissioner for the past two years, which obviously I had to resign from that position, you know, to be appointed to the township council. At that point, it's been kind of a whirlwind getting caught up on uh, all the issues, not that I'm not aware of them, but, you know, uh, reading them in publications, uh, you know, the patch and Listening to OBM, which it's preset on my radio all the time. Uh, That's the right thing to say, by the way. Regardless <laughs> of whether it's true, I, we appreciate that. No, it's funny because, uh, <laughs> quite frankly, even uh, the ambulances, everybody knows, oh, Kevin was in this last because WOBM's on, not one of those nice. other stations. But uh, so I'm just, you know, really getting caught up to speed and uh, learning about the discussions that uh, led up to different ordinances being, you know, uh, brought up before the council and whatnot. So. I look forward to working with not only people in Ward 2, but I look at it as the whole town. That's great. So 
So there's so much to go through there, um, and I don't even really know where to start. <laughs> but I'm going to start at the obvious place for me. So 7-Eleven. 7-Eleven, let, me just, let yes. me ask you a question because this is, you know, now that I know that you are uh, you are an authority on 7-Eleven, that you are a subject matter expert, that you really can own the uh, the the knowledge and the information. Um, I'm having I've been having a problem. The problem was fixed today, but I, I feel like it lasted too long, and I just want to know that. That you, as a man who clearly understands quality and understands service to uh, not only a town but to a customer, do you think it's acceptable for a Seven Eleven to be out of Coke Zero for four days? Absolutely not. Okay, I just Kevin, I just <laughs> wanted to make sure I didn't know if we were going to have to cut this interview short and move <laughs> along, or whether you were going to go the right way on that. So, Kevin, thank you so much. I appreciate that. No. Problem. So, okay. So all that. Right, all that you're, you know, um, uh, volunteering. You're fire commissioner. You're, I mean, look, I don't think anybody could question your devotion to uh, the town, your devotion to the citizens herein. I mean, look, <laughs> you, I mean, it sounds like uh, textbook, right? So graduate from high school north, OCC, worked at the hospital. Uh, I mean, you name it, you've been involved in it on some level. So why then? seemingly being a guy that pretty much can go everywhere in town and know everyone, right? Like you pretty much, let, let's be honest, you you don't walk a lot, you don't go a lot of places that people aren't like, oh, hey, Kevin, how are you, right? And, and that's that's very right. true. Yeah, so, okay, so, so now all of those people, instead of saying, hey, Kevin, listen, good seeing you, man, really, uh, <laughs> you know, missed you, how's the family, how's everything doing? Now they're going to say, Kevin, what the heck is going on in North Dover? What are you guys doing over there? What's the story? What? What makes you want to take the leap? Be, be subject to criticism? Yes, yes. Well, and, and that's a very good question. Often uh, I sit there and say, well, you know, myself along with other people that counseled before me, years before me and current, uh, you know, it, it's very easy to sit back and, uh, you know, throw stones from a, a keyboard in your in your mom's basement, so to speak. Uh, it takes a special individual to say, hey, I, I care about my town. Right. I care about the direction it's going and I want it. Make Tom's River continue to make it great, and I'm going to step up to the plate. Uh, as I said, I'm retired from you know the police department. I could have very easily, you know, gone anywhere. Um, I choose to stay in town. My whole family's here, uh, nieces, and nephews, in in the schools, and Tom's River is where I'm at. So, so you, so you, you want to make an impact? Yeah, you, you have kids, right? I do not. You done it? I, I knew that. I was, you know, I was not. That's what. Yes, I was, that's what I meant. You don't have kids. Uh, so, how old are your nieces and nephews? Do oh, you know? any range from. Where, what's, uh, what schools are they? What schools uh, are they? And are they like all over the map here? Uh, yeah. Well, the youngest ones are now in Hooper Avenue or uh, Intermediate East. Okay, got it. So, so you, so you have a good feel for the schools. You have a good feel for the geography. You have a good feel for uh, all of our warts. All of those things. So the question I have to ask you is, you know, as as somebody now that's in a position to make a difference, um, and we're going to talk about this after the break. So see, you get a couple minutes to think about it, right? And I won't distract you. I'm going to let. I'll give you a pen and some paper, and uh, you know, we'll turn on the light a little higher over here so you can see. Um, but I, I really want to know what are the issues to you that you think are most important that you really would like to see, kind of, if not fixed, then that we're on the road to fixing them because we know. You know, things can't be fixed with one broad stroke, although we'll give you a magic wand later to go <laughs> fix something. Thank you. Um, so so I want to hear what you think are really the biggest issues that we have and what you're working on. Kevin Gagan, uh, our newest town council um, member here in Tom's River, back right after this. Get more Wake Up with Jeremy Grunin at our website, WOBMAM.com. News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. Five minutes. Oh, I'm talking into the microphone, but the microphone's on. Welcome back, 721, Wake Up with Jeremy Grunin. Whew, 721, that means 39 minutes. 25 degrees on our way up to 28 today, February 11th. WBMAM 1116 and 1310 News Talk Radio. Streaming live on the Radio Pup app and at WOBMAM.com. 732-505-1160 if you want to join the conversation with Kevin Gagan, our newest member of the town council. And when we went away to break, we asked Kevin... Please let us know what do you think are the issues that you really, uh, you know, that you're really zeroing in on, that you really feel like we need to address, uh, that we need to find solutions for. We are not going to find solutions in the next 38 minutes now, but we are, uh, uh, you know, we all have to understand that these are the things that we as uh, members of our local community need to knock down 
uh, one after another. So go ahead, Kevin. What do you think? What's what's on your agenda? Well, obviously, the latest uh, hot topic, you know, issue that we're all trying to deal with is uh, not only as residents, but the community at large, is the explosion growth in the North Dover area, as well as the real estate canvassing that, you know, a number of residents have been, you know, harassed by. Um, you know, the, the explosion of growth, you know, everybody, uh, or, you know, it seems on the surface that, you know, we're, we're building homes for people and whatnot, but in the meantime, you know, Route 9, it's single roadway. Uh, you know, mohill has been on, on uh, trying to address that for years as well as Route 70. I also didn't mention earlier, I also still work today as a paramedic for Virtua Health Systems, so I'm on Route 70 quite a bit, and right. I couldn't agree with them more. But in, in that area, um, you know, as a you know, first responder, whether there is a firefighter or, you know, an EMT, uh, you know, we go wherever the call is. And, and sometimes, you know, there's a, uh, you know, there's either a delay in uh, different, you know, people calling, which if that's a fire, obviously fire is going to, you know, double in size, you know, in very few, you know, a couple of minutes early on. Uh, EMS calls, we don't care. We just go. Same thing with the police department. You know, we have a wonderful police department. And, uh, you know, certainly, obviously, my roots are in, in public safety. So it's just, you know, it needs to be addressed so we can all live happy together, so to speak. So that's certainly an issue. And so we need to figure out how to address that, I think. And I think that's a great point that it's not only an issue of, you know, we look at an issue from a harassment standpoint. We just, you know, we were talking to Jim Flanagan about that a little bit and and kind of a different perspective on how it affects a realtor, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, a realtor just trying to, to, to act in good faith. Um, Another great point that we're, we're talking about a whole new set of traffic, a whole new set of. Look, listen. Schools, let's be fair. It's everything. new schools. It's it's a it's a population, frankly, that walks um, on 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 a weekend uh, when there's more traffic. So it's definitely a trickier deal. Um, I would be interested to know, and we only have two minutes before our next break, but I'd be interested to know there's a there's a movement afoot um, taking a take putting aside the church road issue and this issue. There's a movement afoot saying that we need to stop the sprawl, quote unquote, in Tom's River. And I think by sprawl, they mean that we need to limit development, whether that's, you know, that's of, of all kinds. Um, how do you feel about that? I, I think I think there's a lot of different sides to uh, to what sprawl means. And, and it, it seems kind of one sided currently. Sure, sure. Well, obviously, it, it's tough to go back in history. I remember Tom's River in the 70s, right. uh, you know, before the center divider on Hooper Avenue in Silverton was there. Uh, you know, there's a stop sign at Hooper and College Drive, things of that nature. Um you know, everybody certainly has a right to live where they want, um, as long as, uh, you know, uh, we just need neighborhoods to, to get along, certainly. Right. Uh, you know, the, the knocking on doors, the harassing. If, if somebody wants to sell their home, their car, they're going to put a for sale sign up. Right. If not, you know, don't bother them. Right. Uh, quite simply. Uh, again, with the, you know, with the schools, we've seen, you know, the schools being built, and, and we need to maintain, you know, the schools uh, and, uh, you know, the code enforcement issues. Uh, you know, as the town has grown over the years, uh, different people have, you know, what's what's clean to Kevin, <laughs> Kevin clean, as right. people uh, always laugh about, is different than you or someone else. Right. Um, so. Okay. Uh, so good. So, so Kevin, now uh, when we come back, we're going to give you the opportunity because you're going to have uh, the the uh, Wake Up with Jeremy Grun and Magic Wand, where you are going to have the ability to fix one problem in Tom's River. Right, one problem that's an issue, and you're going to tell us what that is, why you think that's the the big one, um, and why you want to uh, you want to stamp it out or you want to make it right. Kevin Gagan, our newest member of the town council here in Tom's River, he'll be back with us after the break. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin. See you after the news. Coming up next, the latest from WOBM News, the Town Square New Jersey News Network and Fox News Radio. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin. News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. Live from Town Square Towers at the heart of the Jersey Shore, wake up with Jeremy Grunin. Get up, get out, do something. Join the conversation, 732-505-1160. News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. Listen online at WOBMAM.com. Welcome back. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin, 735 in the home stretch. WOBM AM 
25 degrees February 11th. 1160-1310 News Talk Radio, streaming live on the Radio Pup app and at WOBMAM.com, 732-505-1160 to join the conversation. I just saw Marianne walk in. She's obviously feeling better. She's back. She's back. Anyway, uh, that's the uh, preferred home health care show uh, from 8 to 10. Um, Joel and Marianne, I, uh, I always, you know, listen, I'm not going to lie. It's what I listen to from 8 to 10. Sometimes I'm in a meeting and maybe I have it in my ear. I'm just saying, maybe I'm streaming it um, and I'm watching the sign language version of it, but I I, I watch it all the time. Uh, we are joined in studio, Kevin Gagan, uh, newest member of uh, the Tom's River Town Council. And so, of course, um, this is our, uh, this is really like our standard, like our, uh, our signature question, uh, your magic wand. Uh, what are you doing with it? What are you working on to, what are you fixing in one fell swoop here in Tom's River? Well, it, uh, probably I, I, one of the bigger issues that I all, you know, see in town is, uh, and we're dealing with it every day is the after effects of Superstorm Sandy. Um, I'd love to see people get back in their homes and that has a domino effect. First of all, I'm very, uh, compassionate towards those people that are out of their homes. My mom is still living with me as her home is being raised and her house is in, in the air for the past couple months and no activity uh, being done on it. I think that'll help in a number of ways. As I said, the domino effect. We get, uh, you know, the, the dune replenishment done, all the beach holdouts done um, in Maria Maruca's ward. We get people back in their homes, their summer homes. It uh, promotes tourism. Our businesses survive. Uh, there's no, you know, people that uh, are looking to capitalize on on these residents whether it's your primary or secondary home or third home don't really care um and, and that uh, also i've seen in my silverton area people out of their homes people wanting to sell at dirt cost cheap uh you know uh, pricing and whatnot and it, it has that ripple effect you know throughout uh people being out of their homes you know out of work and whatnot you know also leads to different code enforcement issues different drug issues you know, right. uh, how are they sporting their drug habits of heroin, uh, you know, through burglaries and whatnot. We have an excellent, you know, police force that uh, is on top of it, addressing it. Our county prosecutor, uh, Joe Coronado, dealing with the heroin issue, uh, trying to take it one step further. Uh, again, it's all uh, quality of life issues that, that affect us, whether you realize it or not, whether you live out off of Whitesville Road, you know, we have people out of their homes, uh, you may be not paying taxes or, uh, you know, the homes are, uh, you know, uninhabitable. And, I guess if I had a wand to say, hey, make everything better, that would be it. You know, take right. care of the dunes and get people back in their homes where they can live a happy life. Yeah, so it's uh, it, and that's a great point. I think that um, when you start looking at root cause, so we know that we have issues here. We have a homelessness problem. We have a uh, a drug problem, uh, and and we're not alone. I mean, this is not this is not specific to Tom's River. This is not like something different from the rest of the free world. Um, but it has definitely been exacerbated by the fact that we had this event that just changed the lives of so many. Uh, and, you know, you look at the working poor um, and those that are putting in a 40 hour week that are working their tails off day to day to day uh, just so they could pay their bills. Uh, and then something when something catastrophic happens, like a storm like that, they they fall off the grid. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's a great point. I mean, I think that, you know, I think a lot of us. And, and uh, myself included, at times we forget that there's still so many people that are uh, negatively impacted that are fighting to get their way back into their homes, get them get their way back uh, to some normalcy in their lives. Um, you know, I, I have long term recovery group um, literally is one door down from our foundation office and, and the Chamber of Commerce uh, in our office buildings. And so we see it every day, yeah. you know, and, and you could talk to. Um, to the folks there at Long Term Recovery, and they're working. I'll tell you what, I shut my light off at five o'clock, five thirty. Uh, you know, heading off to another meeting or whatever. Their light doesn't go off till seven, eight o'clock at night most nights because mm -hmm. they're working to put people back in their homes. So, Kevin, I agree with you a hundred percent. This is uh, this is still issue number one, uh, and the issue that keeps impacting us because we'll see that issue also as we uh, move forward with budgeting. Um, and we understand the amount of rateables that have been lost here and that we're trying to recover. So, uh, unfortunately, great point. And, uh, and, and by the way, excellent use of your magic wand. <laughs> well, thank great you. Job. I can, uh, great job. Do the most good for the most great, people. Great job. That was, uh, that was strong. Um, so, Kevin, uh, listen, overall, uh, we're excited to have you. I mean, we've learned a lot today. Um, I, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure there isn't a single 
first responder act that you're not like you don't have your hand in, right? You've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly, mm-hmm. right? Yes. Um, you have uh, you've done so much for this community already. Um, we are we are definitely excited to have you as part of the leadership team uh, that is working to make Tom's River a better place. Um, any last thoughts? Then anything that you want to share with anyone? I mean, where you know, if people if people want to reach out to you, if people want to meet you, I mean, what what do you have? Anything? Any 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 public appearances coming up? Are you are you on anywhere? What do you where where can people find you? How can they get to you? <laughs> well. Uh... Pretty much think almost every resident in Tom's River has my cell phone or knows a family uh, member how to get in contact with me. There is no uh, immediate public appearances or whatnot. I would like to uh, get out there into the communities and say, hey, hi, this is me. And, you know, I've always been here kind of in the background. You may not have realized it, but uh, I just want to continue continue to make Tom's River a great place to live. That's great. Look at that. Kevin Gagan, making Tom's River great again. Uh, right, we've always been great. We're going to continue to make it. <laughs> oh, oh the same. So, we're, so you're not going down the Donald Trump road. No, right? No, absolutely uh, and, and not. You, and you don't believe in a socialist society either, right? I just want to make sure that we have to ask that of all our guests. Okay. As long as you're not feeling the burn, you're a friend of the show. <laughs> no, so no, not good. not feeling yeah, it. Tom's River has always been a great place. It's been you know great opportunities for myself, my family. Good all place right. to have a business, raise a family, go to school. Awesome. Kevin Gagan, our newest member of our Tom's River Town Council and uh, obviously all around good guy and uh, and uh, and huge uh, fan of 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 Tom's River, huge supporter. uh, And most importantly, somebody that has gotten up, gotten out and done something every day of his life to try and positively impact folks um, on the front lines and now kind of going uh, the next level. Right. Leaving the front lines and instead kind of helping to kind of. Um, to move those lines forward um, in a leadership capacity in town. So, Kevin, thank you so much for joining us today. Nothing but the best of success and, and best of luck in your uh, in your new endeavor. Thank you very much. All right, and you have a great day. We will be right back with more Wake Up with Jeremy Grunin.